Hello and welcome to Adikimi's YouTube channel. My name is Harsh Singh and in this video we shall discuss the feature news for today, 25th of March 2022. Today's feature news is on port sector in India. And in this video we will understand what has been the journey of port sector development in our country, what is its potential, what are the challenges, how India has looked at port-led development in the country through the help of Sagar Mala initiative. So let's begin this discussion. All right. Yes. Now, uh, hi, Netra, Hima, Bhabani, Amlan, Yasha, Ashish, Pooja, Preeti, all of you welcome. So let's begin this discussion. Now, giving a small uh, update before we get into the uh, port sector development, a small context to it is the reality that uh, countries around the world are far bigger and uh, far more uh, capable of trading, right? So United States of America, 25% of world GDP. China, 16% of world GDP. Japan, 6% of world GDP. Germany, 5% of world GDP. India accounts around 3% of world GDP. 3% of world GDP, yet the trade is lesser than 3%, right? So majority of the manufacturing, see India trades in services. India also trades in, uh, uh, you know, goods. So merchandise, export and import, right? So this is not as much as uh, the other countries do, right? China, which has a manufacturing of 30%, what does it do with these kind of manufacturing? It participates in exporting of these, right? So just showing you the kind of economies, the bigger economies that exist around the whole world, right? So this is about the GDP. And when we look at uh, uh, manufacturing superpower, right? These are... These are the entities manufacturing goods and products, merchandise manufacturing. China, 30%, USA, 16%, India comes to 3%. The ratio, the, the manufacturing superpower, India comes quite uh, you know, below in the sequence after China, which has 30% of global manufacturing, India with only 3%. Uh, after China, it's USA, and then it's Japan, Germany, South Korea. There's a reason why I'm mentioning this image. There's a reason why I'm showing Japan and Germany here. That comes in the subsequent images. These countries with uh, 7.2 and 6.0% uh, of manufacturing, they are also amongst the leading shipping countries among the whole world. Shipping countries. All right. Let me show you the presence of shipping countries around the whole world. Top maritime countries in the world. First one is Greece. Greece. And the second one is Japan. And then we have a country like China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Germany. Singapore does not even have a population of 1 crore. It is hardly 50 lakh. Right? Uh, Greece has got a population of a few crores, just a few crores. Ja Japan around 14 crores. That's it. And these are the top maritime countries in the world. What is the meaning of top maritime countries? Not that they are into the maximum movement of goods, but the ships owned by these companies are the maximum in the whole world. Starts with Greece and then Japan, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Germany, South Korea, Norway, Bermuda and United States. Nowhere is India in the scene. Even if India is among the top manufacturers, 3% of manufacturing of the whole world, but then we don't have ships enough, right? And we are speaking of port-led development, port development, but then no ships. Ships belong to Singapore, ships belong to Hong Kong, ships belong to Norway. These are those countries which are which have hardly got population and hardly got entities to trade. Right? Singapore not manufacturing anything, Hong Kong not manufacturing anything, but yet located at strategic locations. This brings me to another important uh, image for you, strategic locations in the world. Strategic locations which are important for trade. Now, this image clearly shows all the shipping routes, the popular shipping routes and the popular places in the shipping routes. So, which are the popular places? If you know, you would uh, certainly respect what Gibraltar stands for, right? Gibraltar is uh, uh, a small inlet, right? Uh, this is the inlet through which the ships enter the Mediterranean region between uh, two countries. Which are the countries? Morocco and uh, Spain? Yes. Right, so Gibraltar is one. Panama is the other one. Panama is the other one. Gibraltar, one. Panama, another one. And the third place, uh, which is very important, is the Gulf of Aden. 
right oman and uh, the horn of africa and then another place is state of hormuz another place is strait of uh, malacca see one two three four five important uh, you know places where uh, it's like a chicken snake and uh, the fishing and, and shipping happens from these areas not only these locations where india is strategically not present you should also look at those places which are in bigger dot the bigger dots represent those places which are the largest ports by volume of trade carried out let us see that rotterdam uh, part of netherlands not rotterdam one of the largest ports shanghai in china guangzhou china yokohama nagoya busan in uh, japan japan and busan in south korea respectively and then we have singapore look at the bigger circle here hong kong part of the uh, administered region in china dubai major port all right look at some country uh, you know uh, south america right in brazil and then some ports in uh, uh, usa jersey vancouver in canada and uh, houston these are the bigger ports where does india stand here yeah? so india has got these smaller ports existence here right smaller ports where the export happens only of those product which we process in india right and those we, which we have imported gems and jewelry oil raw oil and we have exported the processed ones largely we are about imports right so when we import products even in that matter india imports as much as 95% not even 90 90% of the global trade but as much as 95% of india's trade happens through trade in items happens through marine areas and out of that 70% value is constituted of these trading items 30% are traded through other means right air or you know virtual but then 70% of the value of the total trade is generated through 95% of the trade that happens through marine areas this is india india has got a vast coastline of 7500 kilometers and 15000 kilometers almost double the number of the kilometers of inland waterways indian india india's trade potential is very high through marine areas but we are not able to do that even when the uh, the entity uh, you know marine transport it takes lesser cost amlan could you please provide the data for that comparison between uh, or anybody else can you please provide the data for the comparison between the inland or or the waterway transport in comparison to cost in rail and road transport not only that the tonnage the tonnage that can be moved uh, one ton of load that can be moved from uh, uh, the uh, 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 the the water transport that is far more economical than road and rail even then it is not utilized it is more environmental friendly not utilized india does not have the present caliber uh, to be able to advance its port led development right currently uh, all right currently india has got 13 major ports in the country 13 major ports there's a confusion 12 13 12 13 13 major ports in the country all right so bhumani says one port planned around their uh, place all right great so 13 major ports in the country let me show that to you right it could be a question that they ask which are the major ports which are not so kandla is a major port good enough mumbai is a major port and jawaharlal nehru port trust mpt is mumbai port trust jawaharlal nehru port trust another one both of them located adjacent to each other around mumbai region mormugao port is in goa new mangalore port trust in mangaluru and this is in karnatak and then we have kochi port right major port tuticore in tamil nadu and then chennai port another in tamil nadu and ennor another major port in tamil nadu it is marked in green but it is not green it is a major port ennor port so three major ports in tamil nadu and then we have one in vishak one as vishakhapatnam in uh, in uh, in andhra pradesh paradi port in in odisha and then we have another uh, major port with kolkata port trust right uh, Kolkata port. This is the only major port which is a riverine port in the country. Is Haldia a major port? No, Haldia is only the, an outpost of the port. Outpost of the port, right? Interconnecting terminals for this port, Kolkata port, right? So these are the 12 ports, which is the 13th. This is where it is. Port Blair. 
right? So 13 major ports. What are the major ports? These are those ports which are a part of the union list maintained under the shipping ministry directly. And India has got 13 of major ports and India has got several minor ports as well, right? 200 plus minor ports which exist on western and eastern side of the country. These minor ports are administered by state or by other organizations which are, uh, you know, in the concurrent list uh, for management of these ports, right? So, the major ports handled by the union government, uh, by the union government through the Ministry of Shipping, the minor ports handled by other authorities, all right? So, this is the distinction. What is the potential of uh, shipping in a country like India? See, I have just put down some uh, images here. So, look at the cruise tourism, cruise tourism in India, prospects of it. From Mumbai, people would come from abroad to Mumbai, Mumbai to Kochi, Kochi, Kochi to Singapore. There are tours running, right? So, tourism potential. What about uh, the containers uh, carrying items, right? Potential for that. Then an image, this is an oil tank tanker. If you can see this in uh, this image, these are the oil tankers, right? Specialized tankers. And these tankers are of high utility for a country like India, where the petroleum and LNG LPG is not transported uh, through pipelines, but through oil containers, right? And then they also have potential in uh, oil exploration. They have exp they have uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, you know exposure in uh, the management of transshipment port uh, transshipment zones let me show you what are and then we also have uh, some experience in oil exploration all of them can utilize the port infrastructure let me give you an example of how india is an important place in as a transshipment hub look at this map look at this map itself there are many places which are important how has uh, singapore become important how has hong kong become important these are trading places, these are places to trade, these are not places of consumption, right? And these are the transshipment places. Look at Hambantota, a place just at the, you know, the fag end of Sri Lanka. And these are the places which become important places for transshipment. When the, when the ship comes from Europe, crosses through uh, the, the Gulf of Aden and the Swiss Canal, and it wants, it might have to even go to, you know, uh, uh, Singapore or Hong Kong. And then return back. It can actually return back from halfway from Kochi port back to its European destination. And another ship could take the movement forward. This is what is called as a place of transshipment, right? The item or the goods, they are there for a small time. And later on, they move with the help of a different uh, ship altogether. When India is building a oil farm in, in Trincon Mali in Sri Lanka, what is that place? The oil farms are those places where in huge containers, we will be containing a lot of oil and transshipment will happen through these places. The ships which will come, they will refill oil here and then the ship will move forward or another ship will move forward. So, India has got a major, uh, you know, uh, strategic location in the Indian Ocean where transshipment can happen. But are we utilizing it right now? Not really. Right. Many industrialists, many people who are in foreign countries, many Indian diplomats have themselves said that India declares of projects, but then we do not, uh, you know, implement these projects. We do not pass on the uh, projects to uh, the industrialists. There is enough bureaucracy, red tapeism in the country, which does not let the uh, lead the in, in the national infrastructure projects. Right. So these are uh, some of the challenges when we look at. Uh, the port development in inland areas, we have passed major bills. This is the image of dredging, dredging, removal of uh, uh, the removal of the sedimentation uh, in the river area so that the depth of the river is uh, is maintained at least three to four to five feet of depth so that these uh, boats could move across, right? In case of uh, tourism, right? In case of roro services, roll on and roll off services, right? Where uh, the ships are used, the boats are used, where vehicles can get on it and then they can move from one side of the uh, river to the other side. Then loading of uh, entities with the help of uh, 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 these riverine ports, right? Carrying out industrial activities in inland water. These are the important potential that uh, the inland water also uh, contains, right? Amidst this, India initiated a Sagar Mala policy, Sagar Mala policy under Ministry of Shipping, right? So, largely, this has got four aspects of uh, development. One is port-led development. Okay, first of all is infrastructure for ports. 
Okay, let me show that image of uh, the projects. All right. Yes, here it is. Portlet development. Yes. Just a bit. Huh. There are four aspects of uh, Sagar Mala project. One is port led development, port as the hub of development. So, not only redevelopment of the older ports, the uh, major ports and the minor ports, but development of mega ports in the country. Six mega ports have been proposed in the country. Six. And I would like to show you the names ahead of many other people who wouldn't know about these. Uh, mega ports, uh, possible development in the country. These mega ports are not the major ports, these are different and these are Sagar Island, right? Sagar Island, the tourist destination, development of a major port there in Sagar Island uh, near Haldia, right? Uh, the second one is Paradeep in Odisha, Paradeep Outer Harbour in Odisha. The second one is uh, uh, Sir Sirkazi, Sirkazi in Tamil Nadu. The fourth one is Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu again. The fifth one is Bellikeri in Karnataka and the sixth one is Vadhavan in Maharashtra. Sixth, uh, sixth major mega port development in uh, India, right? So you see Tamil Nadu will have two more major, two more mega uh, ports apart from the major ports that it has had, right? Tamil Nadu is also one of the industrial states, one of the highly developed industrial states. Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, Maharashtra, Haryana industrial states, right? So, uh, this is first component of the project, development of the ports, port infrastructure, this is one. The second one is of uh, uh, development of commercial areas around the port, port-led development. So, development of coastal economic zones, coastal economic zones, right. So, not only development of port infrastructure, but development of complete eco ecosystem of uh, uh, development around the port, right. So, India has see the total agenda is to spend around 130 billion dollars 130 billion dollars in years in quite a few not in one year 130 billion dollars to be able to develop all these right along with that there should be development of the coastal community see if you look at the coastal areas a substantial chunk of the population lives along the coastal areas itself india's approximately 50 percent of population 50 percent uh, I'm sorry, 25% of the population lives in uh, a 100 kilometer range of uh, the coast, 100 kilometer range, right? So this is the level of uh, population uh, living around that coastal area and that is the reason that we need more uh, uh, local participation, right? These are three attractive avenues and uh, the fourth avenue is of creating assets uh, for transportation and connectivity from these port areas, regional connectivity, right? So these are the four projects. One is port infrastructure, port connectivity and transportation, coastal economic zones and um, the uh, local population support. These are the four parts of Sagar Mala project. See, the vision has been to lower logistics cost in India. Logistics cost movement is high in India and this is the reason that we, we get the cost, the products at inflated rates. This is the reason that Many countries do not want to operate in India. The cost of operation is high. The co eventual cost of the product is high and it does not lead to more efficiency, right? Another issue in Indian ports is the turnaround time. Since the ports are not mechanized, it takes a lot of time for the ships to enter. They keep waiting. If you go to Mumbai, if you go to Gateway of India and possibly want to go to uh, the Elephanta Caves, you would see a lot of uh, huge ships. They are halting, right? So their anchors are down and they're waiting for their turn where they would be able to um, give out whatever products they bought from the country and take back the products. The time taken in India is three to four days to even a week. Whereas if you go to a place like Singapore, the turnaround time for ship is six hours. The ship comes automatically, the mechanized containers, they handle the products there and then the ship goes back again. The turnaround time in a country like India is very high. Increase export competitiveness right through port led development and exim container movement optimize it export import exim means export import and that is the reason we have exim exim bank these are banks of banks who provide finances for port infrastructure development or any any development for export import right 
So these are the three vision. The components is port link development, modernization, connectivity, uh, inland water wheels, all of it, right? And what do they want to achieve? Uh, achieve through coastal economic zones and multimodal transport network. All right. So this is what has been the part of uh, Sagar Mala project initiated by the government. Sagar Mala again is a part of Gati Shakti. Simple enough. Gati Shakti has the waterway component, then Bharat Mala component, the airway connectivity through Udan scheme, and then we have digital connectivity through you know, Bharat broadband network. Hmm, quite a few. And then uh, so roadway, waterway, airway, and also railway, and then uh, digital connectivity, right? So these are all the part of uh, India's uh, infrastructure development potential in the country. All right. So uh, see, yes, have you put that data here? Strait of Gibraltar. Thank you. Hi, Gopal. Good evening. Nanraj, Namaste. Welcome to you. All right, looking at exploring opportunities in Odisha, good. So you would find some competition, not much, some competition from people like uh, Ambani's and Adani's. They are also exploring something there. Gota Khor Dukia Lagata Hai. So this is I, some other day. One port already planned in my location. Okay, we have seafarers ranked third. Oh yes, absolutely very good. Hima says an important point that India has got human resources potential, seafarers, those persons who are a part of merchant navy and India provides human resources for them. So we have so many people who join from Greece. They go to Portugal to join uh, the, uh, the uh, merchant navy from India. This is what they go to, this is where they go to. They go to places in the Middle East and uh, uh, they work for foreign companies so india has got seafarers but india doesn't have ships and this is rightly discussed through uh, this point as well i appreciate your inputs because uh, you know through our community we'll be able to develop the holistic points right major shipping destinations none in india right also we we do have a strategic location we have not been utilizing this very well right what about the uh, major shipping countries around the world See, Greece, Japan, China, Singapore, Hong Kong, Germany, South Korea, Norway, Bermuda, United States. So, these are the countries which have got maximum number of ships, India nowhere, but human resources, quite a large force is Indian. Good point presented. Thank you. Okay, water, 25 paise per kilometer, road, 10 times, 2.5, Hima also says, similar data, all right. There's another data that I have then for you people, if you want, only if you want. That says waterway transportation costs only 0.2 to 0.3 per ton, Kil uh, per ton. And by rail and road, this is 2 to 3 uh, per ton, right? When I looked at the website of shipping ministry, it spoke of certain important agenda, right? I put a screenshot so that uh, we do not miss out on these important things, right? Uh, so first one says port modernization and new port development port modernization whatever infrastructure we have at post it must be mechanized it must be developed especially the major ports first and then the minor ports as well right under the central government under the state government so port modernization and new port development especially the mega ports first port connectivity enhancement approach road a port has been created but then a terminal for the uh, roadways, the, the road terminal has not been created, the approach road is not there, the, uh, the railways start 3 kilometers ahead of that place. So this is not integrated post, no, this is not a, 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 a place for a regional connectivity, what we call as integrated logistics terminal, integrated logistics terminal, this is not then. What is required is port led connectivity is also required. Port-led industrialization, this is the third part, right? Coastal economic zones, right? So coastal economic zones, this is important. Promotion of coastal shipping and inland waterways. Inland waterways is also a part of Sagarmala project. Do remember that. 15,000 kilometer of Sagarmala, uh, uh, of potential Sagarmala development of inland waterways. And five inland waterways, we have already developed to a sufficient level. And then we also have 100 plus total waterways in the country, right? 
Sagar Mala Development Company also initiated approximately 18% of India's population lives in uh, 72 coastal districts that comprise 12% of India's mainland. See, so only coastal districts, only along the edges, those districts around 18% of India's population lives. It is in the website itself, right? Waterways currently contribute around 6% of India's transportation and which is significantly less than many developed and developing countries. Only 6% of transportation through waterways and it has got such a huge potential. So imagine what Sagar Mala can do to India. It can actually lead to lowering the logistics cost, increase export competitiveness. Example, a uh, uh, juti, uh, a shoe which has been created in Varanasi, if it wants to get transported to USA, we don't have to use airplanes, no. We can transport it through waterways to Kolkata and from Kolkata it can be used, used to, you know, waterways can be used to transport it. And the cost is high right now, cost is, we don't even operate all these things just because water transport does not exist. So lowering logistics cost, in, in fact, we'll be providing a logistics, we'll provide a new uh, item to trade, right? Increase export competitiveness for the country, absolutely true, right? So, so if you note, what can you pick from here? Port modernization, new port development, port connectivity, port load industrialization and coastal community development. These are four things that you can pick up from here, Zagar Mala project and shipping. See, India is one of the important countries for ship building ship repair and ship disposal each of them right ship building ship repair and ship breaking alang is one of the important centers in india alang in gujarat where ship uh, breaking also happens right waterway transportation all right cruise ships roll on and roll off services all right these are important ways in which india can utilize its shipping industry all right uh, what else do we have what does it aid into? It aids the blue economy, right? There have been a few legislations, for example, one of the legislations has been the right of first refusal for all the, so this is how India has been helping, right of first refusal for the Indian made vessels. They have the first right over the items that have, been, that have to be transported in India, right? Or from India, right of first refusal. Those companies or those entities which have been uh, created in India and then there is a cabotage law I have spoken about this a uh, couple of times cabotage law this cabotage law speaks of the Indian vessels which should be utilizing to move the goods from one Indian port to another Indian port suppose suppose the item comes from uh, Cape of uh, Good Hope Cape of Good Hope and it comes to Kochi coast so, will this ship itself be carrying the items from Kochi or through inland waterways or to Mumbai port terminal, MPT, will it be carrying or will Indian ships be carrying? This is where the Indian, the cabotage law plays a role. The Indian ships will be asked first and if they say we will not be transporting, then is when the foreign ships can go and then transport, right? Similarly, India has also initiated the national logistics portal for marine transport logistics portal now this portal will of course tell us where our goods is right for marine in, the, in marine areas marine transportation then major port authorities bill was passed major port authorities bill was passed where an amendment was made see all these 13 major port no whatever we spoke of six on both the sides and one in andaman nicobar all these ports were centralized and they were controlled with the help of shipping ministry now, if a localized development has to take place at Ennor port, which is now being also called as the new name, anybody, please write the new name of Ennor port. All right. So, if Ennor port has to be utilized and its area has to be utilized, if a lot of area is lying waste, then this is, this is the place where uh, port trusts have been created for each individual major ports. And those port trusts will decide if the land can be utilized for local work as well. If more infrastructure has to be built, the port trust will separately decide, not a centralized agency. Similarly, tariff authority has also been created of how much tariff these ports should be uh, charging for the goods, loading, movement, etc. Right. So these are important updates that have happened. Another bill that was passed was inland waterways bill. Now this spoke of registration of all all the vessels which are being operated in the inland areas, interior of India, just like cars have numbers, these ships will also, boats will also have numbers. They also will be disposed of legally. Nobody can, you know, ensure that the boat is just lying, or, you know, without 
any use and waste right so inland waterways bill also was passed right right now the major ports carry around 60% of india traffic and 42% of traffic is carried through the minor ports 52% 58% traffic almost 60% through major ports and around 40% through minor ports right and um, they all the ports included they have 90% plus of uh, trading and the value of these trade is around 70 70% uh, value means price in rupees all right so moving back to some of the items of the feature news today kamrajar port thank you very much absolutely all right so moving back to feature news the economic survey recommends steps to improve performance of port infrastructure 16th largest ma maritime country india 16th largest the country with the second largest population going to be the largest country with population and um, having almost uh, uh, seventh largest size we are still 16th largest maritime country not as good as uh, what greece are what hong kong is and what and what japan and greece and uh, singapore are right china of course needs to be there but what about the other bermuda right so 16th largest country maritime country with 90% in terms of volume and 77% in terms of trade value 7500 kilometers of coastal and 15000 kilometers of inland waterways right so this is the update india is one of the world's top five ship recycling countries and holds 30 percent share in global ship recycling market see we are into ship recycling but we are not into ship making right ship making even if we may we make it for the uh, other countries right if we are doing it for ourselves that would be a greater step to play right India plays a marginal role in the export of maritime transport services with less than 1% share in the world market. We don't have container ships only. We take it on loan, right? We, we lend it from other countries. The growth in traffic has exceeded the growth in capacity. So the traffic has exceeded the growth in capacity. So we need to develop more port infrastructure. Port infrastructure, right? Port-led development, port connectivity and coastal uh, coastal population development. These are the four components of Sagar Mala. So do remember these four components. Do remember the possible six uh, mega ports that we want to create. Try drawing a map of the 12 major ports that we have in the country or the important choke points around the whole world. That will be a good, good way to go ahead, right? Uh, merchandise export, all right. We know what is the potential in India, merchandise export. Just today only we study, you know, $400 billion of uh, export mega special economic zones being created around all so i think 14 of these have been planned 13 or 14 of these uh, mega uh, export uh, processing zones e epcs and coastal export zones have been planned around these port areas only if you look at this map this is how they have planned the export zones one export zone second export zone third export zone fourth fifth this is how they have planned the whole region will be utilized to export the items one simple example i would like to give you here is mormugao port now all the items that are exp uh, that are uh, you know uh, mined from the north of karnatak and around goa region iron ore minerals copper other minerals which are excavated here they are sent abroad through mormugao port similarly these mundra port kandla port all of them are utilized for the inputs that we get from from where from middle east and they return back from these ports itself mundra port is one of the um, uh, it, it's not a major port yet it is one of the biggest ports on the west side similarly vishakhapatnam port whatever we and paradip port whatever we uh, uh, mine in the eastern part of the country they get exported from these ports itself it is but natural that these ports would be utilized for this purpose so port led development and using coastal economic uh, zones for uh, exporting this is a very good uh, step ahead. This is what everybody utilizes for. How is Greece an economy for exporting? They are just a coastal country. We have coastal area. Bhutan can utilize it. Nepal, Bangladesh. See, what if Bangladesh wants to transport items to Middle East? Can't we have them import at Kandla and then pass it to Kolkata straight? Absolutely. We are, we are initiating six of uh, uh, the industrial corridors, dedicated trade corridors, six of them six of them to 
two moving from Delhi to Mumbai, another moving from uh, one moving from Delhi to Mumbai, another moving from Delhi to Kolkata, and they are another crisp crossing from east to west. So you see, these are prospects for India, provided we have entrepreneurial abilities, provided we could give investments, provided they are skills, provided there is no natural disasters in the country. We are destined to grow in this way, and provided we have good relations with our neighbors, right? What are the challenges? Logistics bottlenecks, lack of expressway connectivity, logistics connectivity, technology bottlenecks, regulation bottlenecks, labor issues. All right, all the points which can be used as some general points at all other infrastructure projects: logistics, labor, regulation, technology, all of them. Even in road creation, we seek the help of the advanced countries. Norwegian countries help in redevelopment of road infrastructure in the country. Norwegian countries. Government reform uh, efforts to support port infrastructure. Technology, Sagarmala, use Sagarmala. And Maritime Vision 2030, this is a complete document in itself. Maritime Vision 2030 is a complete document in itself. I think a couple of hundred pages. I was looking at it. I'll share the updates uh, in next port uh, you know, port discussions from maritime vision, right? So, largely the vision is to develop Sagar Mala project, right? Four of them, and this is how we develop for future, right? Inland vessel bill, ship recycling in the country, right? To be made more greener from now on, greener ship recycling in the country, right? So, all those chemicals which which lie waste or which are collected from the uh, old ship that must be disposed of properly. This is a part of uh, regulating the ship recycling industry, right? Opening the Maritime Heritage Corridor, uh, Heritage Act, Lothal, Gujarat. Thank you for mentioning Pooja, right? Marit Marine Aids to Navigation Bill. This bill passed to ensure that we create uh, the uh, uh, the lights. What are those lights? The coastal lights. What are they called as? Reducing turnaround time, public-private mod models of partnership, Shabar port, yes, extending our port capacities abroad as well. So, private partnership, removing bottlenecks in regulation, cluster approach, single window clearances and uh, work involvement. All these are requirements, all right. So, providing a lot of insights into port-led development in the country. What are we studying? We are talking about uh, port development in India. First of all, a comparison with the GDPs of the country along with the major manufacturers and comparing it with those countries which are the shipping countries around the world. We also understood the shipping bottlenecks, India's position in uh, global shipping order and the major ports around the whole world. And then coming specifically to India, the opportunities that exist in India, how Sagar Mala project envisages the four levels of uh, development. Please remember all those four and uh, the creation of mega ports in that. We also understood the challenges for uh, our country. Along with that, we uh, got an insight into how to overcome these challenges. So what are the prospects for our country? Right. This is what we study in uh, port led uh, development for India. Discuss the role played by ports in development of economy in India. Also, we compared, you no, know, we compared the economy of port along with the other economies. See, there are a lot of points which have which which come out of experience, right? Similar example is that of Kandla port connecting uh, places in Bangladesh. This example was not presented in the books, but I could Think of it very clearly because I know that we are developing uh, industrial corridors. We are developing dedicated rail freight corridors. And just like India can become a transshipment, uh, you know, a place, we can also become a place which can import and export for uh, countries like Bhutan, Nepal and uh, Bangladesh. And even Tibet region for India, right? So innovative solutions. Why? Has India not been able to utilize the full potential of its ports? Also, we also discussed some legislations which have been passed for uh, uh, activating the ports in the country. So, why India has not been able to utilize the full potential of its ports? Talk of all the reasons, no? Right? Infrastructure is not available, technology is not available, uh, 
we do not have the capacity right now in the country we need to seek more finances private partnership is not there right port led governance is centralized and it now it decentralized at certain places all right lighthouses yes absolutely thank you so this is what we studied oh yes thank you he has mentioned a valuable point my dear friend i need these inputs time and again the input she has given is biodiversity hotspot of great nicobar islands we had studied this a few weeks back in the snapshot in an update that in great nicobar island if we want to create a major port here there are challenges there are challenges for local biodiversity there are challenges for against invasive species there are challenges for the local population the challenges for uh, uh, the, the spillage the oil spillage in these areas so uh, these are challenges in a country like india how a developed country is handling it so when we look at the challenges you put this here when we look at an opportunity then you speak about opportunities for development right so we will be flexible according to the demands of the question so please these are important points that must be provided right now if you like this initiative share some love through likes comments and shares if you have subscribed to this channel it's great if you're not if you do it you will receive timely updates for interesting videos also inputs and suggestions are welcome uh, monday onwards i look forward to making the things a little more tight time packed right so uh, i look at beginning i will look at beginning the current affairs discussion at 6:02 6:02 pm monday evening and in case you want to participate in uh, the answer writing which i feel is a wonderful exercise we will start sharp at 5:45 right at 5 the video begins at 6 pm but i think we they, we have got an option to chat before that so 5:45 we i will pose a question 5:50 i will pose another question and 5:55 another question within 5 minutes you respond and in case you've not no problem 6:2 we begin the discussion for current affairs and i'll ensure that this is far more crisp so that uh, we serve you well so that you save your time and uh, uh, may we make the learn effective learning effective and after that we start the feature news right so 602 for the current affairs discussion and 545 for the uh, questions three questions that we put daily all right in case there are inputs most welcome babani good night Amlan, Neetra, good night. Ashish, Kriti, Hima, uh, Niranjan, Babani, all of you, good night. Hima says, sir, port projects overlap with uh, Galatia National Park, leatherback turtle. Okay, 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 okay. Nice. See, imagine this port projects overlapping with the national park. Gopal, good night. Right. So good input provided. If you like this initiative, share some love through likes, comments, and shares. And right now the topics are. very uh, warm in your mind and sure that you prepare short notes as quick as possible good night kanupriya i will see you all on monday right tomorrow utilize well for revising all you have studied please revise otherwise you know it sublimes so please revise this and i will see you all on monday evening at the designated times 5:45 answer writing 6 o'clock we begin the session all right thank you everybody and good night good job very good see you all